Good evening and thanks so much for joining us on a busy Friday night. I'm Lindsay Davis in for David. We begin tonight with the alarming surge in coronavirus cases across the country. As many still lament this unusual Thanksgiving holiday, the U.S. is now reporting more than 13 million cases nationwide. And amid dire warnings of what will likely come next, Los Angeles now issues stricter stay-at-home orders. As we come on the air tonight, more than 264,000 American lives have been lost. In the middle of the pandemic, Black Friday lacking most of its traditional chaos as shoppers head to stores across the country. The famed Mall of America, relatively quiet today due to COVID restrictions. Many customers opting to do their shopping online instead. Millions of people driving and flying in spite of all the warnings about the risks of spreading the virus and creating a spike in already surging numbers. ABC's Gio Benitez leads us off. Tonight, a new crackdown in the fight against the coronavirus. Los Angeles officials issuing a stay-at-home order starting Monday, banning all public and private gatherings with people outside of your own household, except for church services and protests. The new restrictions coming days after the county banned outdoor dining at restaurants. New infections rising nearly 20% out west in the last week. Four states, including California, hitting record highs. And all this as crowds gather for those post-Thanksgiving Giving deals, many determined to shop in person. I mean, pandemic or not, I mean, it, it didn't really matter to me. I just uh, didn't get it online, and uh, this was the last resort. Some stores seeing an early morning rush of shoppers, but many were largely empty. A very different Black Friday. The CDC warning shopping in crowded stores puts you at higher risk of catching COVID-19. No, I'm not nervous about it. And uh, yeah, just as long as we keep our distance, I'm pretty... Uh, Pretty sure I wouldn't get it. To keep people safe, businesses ramping up curbside pickup, limiting capacity inside, and making sure customers wear masks. Officials in Vermont telling residents who held Thanksgiving gatherings with people outside their own household to take urgent action to stop the spread. If you have had one of those gatherings uh, yesterday, uh, that you shouldn't send your kids to school next week. And now people heading home, nearly 7 million flying for the holiday since last Friday, tens of millions on the road. Experts warning this could cause a surge upon the surge already underway. My concerns for the next 6 to 12 weeks is that if we don't do things right, America is going to see the darkest days in modern American medical history. More than 90,000 Americans now hospitalized with COVID, breaking the record for the 17th day in a row. The virus claiming nearly 11,000 American lives this past week, about one person dying every minute. The crushing loss taking a terrible emotional toll. It's been really difficult to watch my colleagues um, and sort of see them trying to hold space and support family members as they are caring for their loved one. Nearly 3,400 people hospitalized with COVID in Indiana, a record up 103% in the past month. Some hospitals running out of beds. All but one of these patients have COVID on this unit. It's a 13 bed unit and we are completely full up here. The virus infecting 13 million people, but the CDC now saying the number of infections through September might have been far higher, eight times higher. This disease is no joke. In San Antonio, Paul Rodriguez, a 52-year-old father, got infected in July. No these are same conditions, and then, you know, all of a sudden I'm hospitalized, and I need a double lung transplant. It was pretty obvious that, um, that his days were numbered, and that if we didn't agree to do something, he was not going to make it to see this Thanksgiving or this Christmas. Paul's double lung transplant just six weeks ago, so far giving him a new lease on life. Love to hear that applause. Gio Benitez joins us now from New York City. And Gio, we know the vaccine cannot come soon enough. And you've just learned that CDC officials plan to meet next week for a key vote. Yeah, that's right, Lindsay. CDC advisors are going to meet on Tuesday. They're going to look at the data and decide who should be getting that vaccine first if it's approved. Also tonight, the Wall Street Journal is reporting that United Airlines is using charter flights to get Pfizer's vaccine into position for rapid distribution. But again, that is only if federal regulators give it that green light, Lindsay. Geo, thanks so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.